Yeah, peace family. So we want to get into this because this is a question that has been fired to us by um some of our followers and they they've asked about um who are the Edomites? Who is E you know, what is Edom? Who are the Edomites? And it says Edom was an ancient kingdom in Transjordan located between Moab to the northeast, the Arab and the west of the Arabian Desert to the southeast south and east most of its former territory is now divided between israel and jordan so you know the hebrew word edom means red and the hebrew bible relates to its name of its founder esau the eldest son of the hebrew patriarch isaac because he was born red all over as a young adult he sold his birthright to his brother jacob for red pottage the tanit describes the edomites as descendants of esau so um you know just going to google images we can see different um, pictures pertaining to the Edomites and stuff um, and Edom. So here we see. Um, so who are the Edomites today? We're going to get to now. This is a, a slideshow that we'll bring up. But prior to that. I wanted to share this article with you family because this is something that we recently came across that's been posted. So this is fresh news that coincides with what a lot of people are asking about. So this is a, a remote hilltop town and it says, whatever happened to the Edomites? Residents of the town built on the ruins of the biblical empire's capital don't know if they are descended from the Iron Age people, but the history they insist is their inheritance. So that's kind of ironic because we see that a lot even in society where people who may not have necessarily belonged to certain ages or places, you know, sort of claim or take ownership of history. Like it says here, they insist that um, the history is their inheritance because it's sort of like, I guess if, if you're there, you can claim it. So we're not actually saying we can't say who these people are because... I'm just reading this article, just checked it out, so we'll see. They're saying that they don't know, but they could be. So it says a resident carrying vegetables passes through an archway, proudly claiming capital of Edom in the town of Buzara, Southern Jordan. And that's October 11th, 2020. So there we see this sign here saying um, capital of Edom. So it says the unusually yet familiar name is etched in Arabic. On an imposing blinding white limestone archway at the entrance to the sleepy town, a welcome sign from millennia ago, capital of Edom. The passerby stops to reassure wayward visitors. You're in the right place, he says, gesturing to the arch. Welcome to the land of Edom. So um, that's crazy. You know, 2020 and 2021, people are saying, welcome to the land of Edom. Now, for those that are definitely versed in the scripture and have followed a lot of teachings, you know, from different pantheons they may be more accustomed to hearing about the Edomites and Esau and stuff and um a lot of people have always been I guess not made to believe that some of this stuff is mythical because when we look at the book of the bible and stuff some people say oh well it's symbolic some say it's, it's spiritual some say it's you know not all these things are literal examples but some of the stuff that we deal with we can understand that it, there is historical context too so it says, mentioned in the Bible, another Jewish text and by Egyptian pharaohs and Roman historians, the Edomites ruled a closely guarded empire 3,000 years ago in southern Arabia and the southwestern Levant from mountainside fortresses and a fortified walled capital city. So that's, I guess it's the same city, Basra. So here in modern day, Buzara, Buzaira, I'm guessing, you know, forgive me if I'm not pronouncing it right, guys. A small farming town in southern Jordan built on and around the age of the Edomite, the Iron Age Edomite capital. Residents are anxious to welcome to the world and share their Edomite heritage. So um, they say it's more than a tourism opportunity. It's a matter of civic pride, you know, Edomite pride. Yet. Despite being an hour's drive from the capital city, you know, few tourists, they say, have actually come to Edom. So they say the only traffic to the town is 10,000 people, um, dented fruit and vegetable pickup trucks, you know, going backwards and forwards. And they say the area is famous for apples and guava, not so much an empire. So, um, 
let's let's kind of go onto this slideshow a bit and then we're going to tap back into that article so while well, looking at the slideshow it says who are the edomites today from esau to zionism and i can't take credit for this article this is published 2015 we've just found this via google search and it seems quite extensive so um i suggest if you guys wanted to check it out you know i will um i will share the link or if you guys can see the link on this you know you can do your own math and um do your google searches and stuff and be able to find it so who are the edomites today the trinity method of verifying biblical claims scripture history and science so um here we go scriptural analysis who is esau and the edomites so here we open with you know genesis speaking about yahweh you know what praises do say no oh, two nations are in your womb one people shall be separated from your body one people shall be stronger than the other or oh, two people shall be separated from your body part of me one people shall be stronger than the other and the older shall serve the younger so um you know i'm sure a lot of guys are familiar with this aspect if not you know i ain't about to go read it through all the bible for y'all lazy you know you can check that out so um so it says here was esau white i'm gonna see if i can enlarge this for you guys family malcolm x aka red mahogany red mahogany colored african-american baby Partage lentils okay let's see so i think we're using these examples to describe color and stuff Esau, definition of Esau, hairy. It does mention a lot in the scalp about the hairy scalp of the wicked. Um, so, okay, and we go. This actually looks like a really interesting slide. Um, so he's saying, if Esau had white skin, it would have been described as the following. So, um, I guess this is saying Esau had red skin, or was, you know, or was Solomon white? Um, so here we go back to Genesis. Yeah, as we see guys telling the story of um, Jacob and Esau, and even just the lands, you know, and the, look at these different kingdoms as we see. Edom shown in yellow on the map, the kingdom of Moab, Amma, you know, and these are different times of the world. So um, despite what we see now, I always say to people, you know, a lot of times we go by the nationalism now of the nationalities that some people claim, but, you know, it doesn't necessarily mean that they are of, you know, the people that they say they're from. So um, when we go back throughout history and, you know, look at genealogy and even how some of these um, nations were born and brought into being and, and continued on forward, we will see. So let's check in at this and say Edom's first act of bitterness towards Israel. Moses, you know, Numbers 24, 14. Moses sent messengers from Kadesh to the king of Edom saying, this is what your brother Israel says. You know all about the hardships that have come on us. Our ancestors went down into Egypt and we lived there many years. The Egyptians mistreated us and our ancestors. But when we cried out to Yahweh, he heard our cry and sent an angel and brought us out of Egypt. Now we are here at Kadesh, a town on the edge of your territory please let us pass through your country we will not go through any field or vineyard or drink water from any well we will travel along the king's highway and not turn to the right or to the left until we have passed your territory but Edom answered you may not pass through here if you try we will march out and attack you with the sword the Israelites replied we will go along the main road and if we or our livestock drink any of your water we will pay for it we only want to pass through on foot, nothing else. Again, they answered, you may not pass through. Then Edom came out against them with a large, powerful army. Since Edom refused to let them go through to their territory, Israel turned away from them. So even just looking at that, you know, in the world that we see now, just an example of wickedness. Um, I did a, a podcast not too long ago where I was speaking on some nations and and just the attitude and i guess the egregious the egregious ways that they treat black people sometimes and even just you know an example of this how, as petty as it sounds somebody trying to get safe passage to pass through somewhere not causing any trouble and the 
the bitterness or that inherent sort of hate that exists, that hostility, you know, so you may not pass through here. If you try, we will march out and attack you, you know, and I think even in today's modern times, a lot of times with people, we're still dealing with that kind of hatred and that animosity where people are, you know, lining up to want to try and attack you just for um, being yourself. So, um, ain't too much change there, I'd say. So, you know, but let's, let's, let's kind of skip and power through this a little bit. Sorry, guys. Okay. What happened to the Edomites after the close of the scripture? They were again subdued by John Hyricanus, by whom they were forced to observe Jewish rites and laws. Then they incorporated with the Jewish nation and their country was called by the Greeks and Romans, Idumea. Okay. Wow, this is a lot of information, guys. As I've said, I haven't been through this um, slideshow myself yet. I really brought it up for you guys' reference, you know, in terms of the questions that were sent in. Um, so let's see if we can skip through it a little bit. The hypothetical conversion process for the Edomites. Um, circumcision, the ritual bath. Um, okay. Okay, so we'll, we'll get back to this slideshow, guys. You know, if you want to find it, you can type this in, in Google. Who are the Edomites today from Esau to Zionism? So, um, you know, I'd recommend checking this slideshow out. It, it definitely seems to have a lot of powerful, powerful information. So getting back to this article, so guys, where we started. So... And this is actually a new article, so which is why I wanted to bring it up. You know, this has been published very recently. This isn't like a an old article or anything. Let me close this ad and stuff. Uh, okay, who? I'm trying to get a date on this article, just so you guys know it's um new information at the same time. It's a brand new website. Well, you guys should know it's new information if they're referencing, you know, 2020 and stuff in the in the article. For some reason, they're not putting a date. Well, I can't see a date, which is kind of um deceptive. But as we see here, it says October 11th, 2020. And this is a recently released article. Oh, here we go. Sorry, guys. I'm so blind. January 5th, 2021. So that's where, you know, it's a recent article. So we'll scroll back down a bit and we'll see, you know, a modern day Edomite, what they actually, what they look like, or they claim in a modern day Edomite. So, and this is Safa Faris Hamid Al Rufu, you know, okay. Director and co-founder of the Bosaira Foundation for Cultural Heritage, who grew up across the street from the remains of the Edomite Palace. And she says, I heard it was built by the Edomites, but I had no idea who they were or what was inside. You know, she said she used to play on the site as a youngster. So here we see, um, I don't know, she's quite red looking, but. So she's a researcher into the Edomite site says in 2014, the U.S. Agency for the Inter International Development and the American Center of Oriental Research, Research teamed up with a community activist to raise local awareness of the Edomite site's importance as part of the sustainable cultural heritage through engagement of local communities project. So signages and paths were developed to guide visitors through the foundation of walls of the Edomite Palace temples, baths, meandering market, and city gates. From this hilltop town, they say the Edomites ruled as early as the 13th century BC and at the civilization's peak in the 8th century BC. Some archaeologists estimate as many as 1 million Edomites lived in Basra and its surrounding villages. 
Edomites leveraged their capital city's position at the midway point of King's Highway, still used today as Jordan's Route 35, an ancient caravan route that ran from the Red Sea north to Damascus and beyond. The crossroads for trade between ancient Egypt, the Mediterranean, Babylonia, the Red Sea, and Arabia made Edom the beating heart of an Iron Age of globalization. So from here, they controlled the trade of incense from interior Arabia, glass and papyrus from Egypt, Edomite copper, medicinal herbs from the north, and reportedly silks from as far away as India. So um, here we see people talk about the Nabataeans and the Romans as a civilization, but no one hears much about the Edomites who were an empire and they only lived right here. So this is definitely an interesting article, guys. Um, looking at present day circumstances and things what are going on, you know, there's a lot of talk about the Bible and the scriptures. You know, um, there's a lot of focus on just the just the new time where we're going now, and and it seems quite prophetic where a lot of things seem to be getting revealed. Nonetheless, you know, things that had been hidden or things that people may not have been aware of and now appearing to be revealed and, and brought into fruition. So um, one of them is just, you know, old ancient history, things that have happened on this planet, you know, how it's affected people and, you know, changes that need to happen. And, and you know, so um, guys, I think this is the same article. What happened to the Edomites? Um, let us know your thoughts and your comments. I'm going to tune you guys back in soon. You know, I'm going to do a bit more research on this myself. And um, we're looking at this biblical anthropology. Is what I, I think that's a nice title. I might call the video that myself. So, um, yeah, this is going back in the old days. And bringing it forward. So... So, yeah, guys, peace. You know, we're going to bring it back. And, and, you know, don't forget to do your own research and your own due diligence and stuff. Um, You got to do that. Don't just, you know, sit around all willy-nilly. Here we have a quote from Nathan Rothschild saying, I care not what puppet is placed upon the throne of England to rule the empire on which the sun never sets. The man who controls Britain's money supply controls the British Empire, and I control the British money supply. Um, so, yep. Scientific analysis. This is quite a heavy article, guys. I'm going to get to this and really dissect it. I may, you know, end up doing another video where I really break the slideshow down a little bit more, but peace to Divine Prospect for putting this together. And, um, you know, don't forget to like, share, subscribe. You know, share the information and stuff. Um, each one, teach one is what we say. You already know. All right, peace.